Welcome back to the shop and welcome to the shop for those who are new. It's uh, winter time. <laughs> so I am continuing to work on projects and that includes old projects. And for those who are new to the channel, uh, I'd like to quickly try to bring you up to date on this project. Uh, the Curtis O1B Falcon. Uh, this is a quarter scale model that came to me by way of a friend, uh, Midwest. Airplane was built in uh, 1980s, as far as I can tell, best I can tell. Uh, came with really old style servos, um, old style connectors, really thin wire. It's kind of sketchy. You can go through and read the, or I guess watch the videos that I've done previously on this. Uh, flew the model, or I guess reflew the model about a year ago. Flies great, very stable. Um, so long story short, uh, what has happened with the model since I last filmed is I took it to an event and during a takeoff attempt, one of the wheels came off. Uh, I'll get into that when I talk about the repair, but uh, just to, to let you know fully what happened. I, so it, the wheel came off right during takeoff and rather than try to circle around and uh, make a, a landing approach, I knew that I was going to be carrying more momentum, so I made a very split second decision and just decided to put the airplane down, which is fine. Um, I had plenty of runway left and the airplane hit the ground. And because of the sort of anhedral that the wheel axles make, uh, the one gear dug into the ground and kind of ripped and did some damage. Uh, and I'll cover that as well. But the airplane flipped over, flipped upside down onto the top wing which subsequently broke every single strut. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's been a tough, it's been a tough thing to swallow and accept that like I did the right thing. I had a safe landing. Uh, I did probably minimal damage to the model. Um, but that being said, uh, because it's winter and I've been doing various other builds and projects and things, this airplane needs to be fixed as well. Uh, I didn't get this airplane just to let it sit around. I want to fly it and I want to fly it a lot. So let's get started. The main thing I want to go over is that the wing is perfectly intact. Uh, this is the, the, the top wing, the one that the airplane rolled over onto. Everything is fine. It's just that <laughs> the mounts. So you can see that there's been some cuts here uh, on each one of these mounts. Uh, this one was fine, but each one of these other three mounts was broken. And what I had to do was do a little bit of surgery. And this was my first one that I did. Um, I made a cut in the covering and this is not a film covering per se. This is uh, like a it's a silk and dope kind of fabric. Um, they, for large scale models like this, they didn't have like Oratex or Solar Tex back then that I know of. That I know of. Again, this is around like when I was a little kid, so it's dating me quite. And I don't mean to date older, more experienced modelers, but there we go. Um, so <laughs> that being said, I had to just cut this back and accept that. At some point, this this wing will have to get recovered. Uh, it's it's absolutely massive, but it will eventually have to be recovered. And this is on the bottom side, so this is not a very visually, you know, obstructive kind of position. But uh, cut here and cut a little bit here, and there are two screws that go in at an angle, and this piece goes on. Uh, I've got some pictures of when I did it, kind of poor lighting because I did it in the corner of the basement, but. Uh, I was able to remove the pieces and figure out that it was screwed into position. And so I was able to reconstruct a piece and subsequently make a 3D model and make it 3D printable. So what you're seeing, these new mounts, these are new. Um, they're made out of ABS because UV stable. And I did test these. I put it on my uh, little bench vise here and put a um, like a fish scale and it was able to tug on them in multiple di directions and 40 pounds these suckers were holding 40 pounds of weight easily without deforming so they're going to be strong enough i don't care what people say about 3d prints this will be perfectly fine 
I've seen far more ambitious strength loads on 3D prints before. So with that, uh, I was very, very happy. So then we had to move on to start recreating the struts. This is a new strut. <laughs> uh, the old struts were broken because uh, they were all wood. They were spruce and uh, they were broken usually here or here. Uh, the, the, the middle piece was intact on both of the struts and these, these actually go here um, on that location, not on the inner. We'll, th those are attached to the fuselage. We'll get to those. We'll get to those. But these, uh, so I dug out the plans and I looked at what I had to do and the easiest course for me with the technology that we've got uh, I 3D printed. Uh, <laughs> I, I took a photo of this angle on the plans and uh, this one as well and stuck them into uh, Fusion 360 and modeled up some joiners. And this is just aluminum tube. Aluminum tube and these are more 3D prints. This is again ABS, that same ABS that I used to print these. And there is a whole bunch of epoxy and these extend two and a half inches into the tube. So it's a very strong joint. I have tugged and tugged and tugged on these. I did a test piece with just the single, uh, the single tip end. I mean, the, the, the aluminum will fail before the, the 3D print will, plain and simple. Um, and that's okay because they were really easy to make. <laughs> that was sort of my thinking like, well, if this happens again, how would I build this? And I think this is a good compromise between what the plans call for and what I, how I build and what I want to do. So from there, uh, after, <laughs> after I got, uh, per the plans, got these struts rebuilt, it was a matter of priming uh, because you're dealing with plastic and metal. Uh, so I made sure to remove all the oils, any oils from the metal and prime it with a really good etching primer and then paint. <laughs> I had to go get a custom color match paint. Uh, it's really, really close. It's not exact, but I wasn't expecting perfection because really old model and the paint is going to be a little bit weird, uh, sun exposed you know, dirt, debris, whatever. I have cleaned the model, but yeah, the sheen hard to match, but it's really, really close. And it's, for me, it's close enough. So with these two things out of the way and talked about and frankly repaired, there's not much more I can do with them. Uh, it was time to go to the fuselage. So let me get this out of here, bring the fuselage into the shop and try to talk about it more. Again, this is on the floor because this model is so huge. It won't fit on my bench in, in the shop and it'll be too tall anyway. So give me a minute. Apologies again for being on the floor, but it's what we have to work with. <laughs> um, so I, I'm focusing here on the landing gear because I want to talk about what actually happened. Um, so again, this is the wheel that came off the left wheel. And, uh, there's, there's one thing in, in thought analysis that I want to point out this airplane when moving forward again, nose, right? So it moves forward in this direction. Well, if you notice the nut, if you were to follow that direction as well, it's loosening. That nut is loosening as it rolls in that direction. Now, I do have a hole in the axle with a cotter pin. There was a cotter pin in there before. I know because I checked. <laughs> I went over this whole airplane stem to stern and uh, I know it was there. So what has happened is that this nut uh, clearly backed out hard enough that it sheared the cotter pin. Now, to be fair, the cotter pin that was there before was old and it was likely a brass cotter pin. Why do I know this? Because I took off the wheels to um, uh, reseal this, um, this fabric. Uh, tried to re-glue it on the outside to use the original stuff. 
Uh, in, in process of doing that, I found out that these were quite easy to move back and forth. And I figured that it was just, you know, a little bit worn, a little bit old. But in reality, those were probably brass, not steel. Even mild steel would have been better than brass. Okay. I didn't know. Um, I don't know that the original builder had intended it to be brass and just be one of those replaceable items. But there you go. Um... So this has been replaced, obviously. I had to replace the nut. It was lost in the field. The wheel came off, went rolling. Um, and so I replaced the nut. I had to take a nut that was existing and then shave it down. I used a Dremel. I used a, a sanding drum on my drill press. And then I finally ended up having to go to a, a metal file on the, on the vise. So it eventually got thin enough where I could spin it on and get the cotter pin in. I did also uh, add some blue Loctite here to help prevent it from getting too freely spinning. But uh, these wheels, <laughs> these wheels underneath are actually from uh, wheelchairs. Yeah, wheel, they're wheelchair uh, wheels. So there's a bearing in the middle. So when you tighten it down, it still stays free moving. So having it tight is not a problem, uh, which is why the other wheel probably was getting tightened as it rolls and it's still very freely spinning. So the bearings are still good. Um, and so it's really just a matter of making sure that the nut is tight and it stays on there. So that being said, uh, the other side, that cotter pin has also been replaced as well. So the other thing that happened that we have to talk about is, again, uh, looking at the front of the model, uh, you can see how, you know, compared to level, these, these wheels are not straight up and down. They're kind of sitting at an angle, okay? That's, that was the thing at the style at the time. Um, so when this wheel came off, you've got an axle that's pointing down at a diagonal into the ground, right? So when that dug into the ground, how do we say things broke <laughs> this mount here ripped out of the fuselage this is wood and then subsequently this landing gear leg bent and then broke this wood and the wood is it, it'll go back together i need to ca at first but um yeah so that's what happened there with the landing gear so the landing gear got a little tweaked the paint got a little cracked. Again, not a huge deal. This is all cosmetic stuff. This is spring steel. Uh, so I'm able to bend things back to where they were. The mount. I had to remove this, uh, the, these uh, screws and there's screws underneath as well for this hinge joint. Uh, that way I could take this block and re-epoxy it into place. I used 30 minute epoxy and then uh, had to drill dowels at an angle. Uh, that way, with a dowel, you have, a, number one, hardwood, <laughs> uh, at least harder than what was there. But the grain of the wood is this way, okay? So the, the shear loads on this mount, uh, it's compromised. So in order to gain a lot of that strength back, I had to drill up through and put hardwood dowels again epoxy them into this mount so that it does it does not have any compromised strength so <laughs> that way i got it at least standing on its legs then i had to check to see okay how is how's the engine uh because if if the engine doesn't work then we're kind of stalled after taking the cowl off and doing a proper inspection, the engine is perfectly fine. I got it running again. Here's a little clip of that. Now, what I did notice on that, I was using one of the old props that came with it, the old uh, uh, Zinger props. Uh, they're just, they're old. It, it's old technology and you could you could literally see the the blades flex as it just would blip up from idle not good so i got a new prop i uh, actually got a couple of props i'll make a separate video uh, testing some props because i haven't run this prop at all yet but the hub was bent a little bit so i had to bend it back so that the propeller uh, spinner would run true so that's all fixed too uh everything else is just hunky-dory except for 
what used to be here. So moving forward with this part, uh, I had a couple of options to to do. I first and foremost, what I what I needed to do is I need to educate myself. Um, I had to dig into the plans. How is this part of the airplane built? Uh, because how you build it sort of determines how you're going to repair it. So after digging into it. I found that it's a pretty simple structure. What you have is uh, essentially plates that are built into, this is just a skin. There are a couple formers in here. With the skin um, removed, you would be able to see that there's an angle that goes right down here. Now it's easier to see on the rear and I thought, well, maybe the rear I can do a repair first. So I started first off both these <laughs> they were broken like right here at the end and there was a y for a diagonal fun fact uh <laughs> there were from the reference pictures that i've been finding there are two different styles of struts here uh there's um there's a diagonal strut or there are just bracing wires there's there's still these the main struts but rather than having like a forward backward strut uh, there's a bracing wire. So I'm more inclined to do the bracing wires, number one, because it's easy uh, to repair, but it's also too re easy to replace if it ever happens again. That being said, like the, the complexity of the, the, the moments and the movements and stuff is, it's not that big of a deal, especially when you look at, like it's got eight mounting points. And it's a small model. It's not going that fast. Small compared to full scale anyway. It's not going that fast. So I, structurally, it's not important. So with that, uh, I tried to just take a drill bit, a small drill bit, and drill at the angle. Because with the, the, the hatch right here removed, the cockpit hatch removed, you can see the angle. Uh, it's built into, into this whole thing. And then... I tried to do a small hole to be like a guide and then big hole, bigger hole. And then I got to a point when I realized, okay, there is gotta be like so much epoxy inside there. So then I took my phone and I shoved it up in there and because I could see a hole, you know, there's, there's a sizable hole in there. So I shine some light inside there and I could see there's just, there's so much epoxy just gooped everywhere that I'm not going to be able to cleanly without removing the skin fix this problem. Reason being is I have to be able to set new struts at the proper angle and secure them somehow. So what we're going to do <laughs> is I, it's a complex option, but I think it's the right solution. Um, I'm going to create a second hatch. Uh, I'm going to do the surgery thing and we're going to cut a hatch on this. I'm going to try to preserve uh, a, a good picture of this. Obviously, I've got this video as reference for this fuel filler cap. This is honestly, this is a, um, let me dig it out. It's a cap. It's a, it's a cap to um, canopy glue. But it's red. See? That's all it is. So I can easily save this. It's not a big deal. And there's, I mean, there's another one here for oil. Um, but that's that's what that's made from. Pretty pretty easy to spot since it's, you know, I'm, I'm familiar with the modeling stuff. So I need to get my razor saw and I am going to cut this skin. I'm gonna cut it all the way around and all the way around. I'm gonna retain this spot because this is hardwood. This goes into something. Um, for these for these wires and I'm just gonna create a whole new hatch yep with the hatch open I'll be able to create new aluminum uh, uh, struts that I can screw into those mounting locations what I'll end up doing is uh, another 3d printed insert that I will epoxy into place um, but then I'll be able to use mounting screws onto them. So again, I can more easily replace them rather than just goop the epoxy in place. Um, and that way I can just use securing screws much like this hatch. So it's got a screw here and a screw here 
and the whole thing just lifts right up and then you have easy access into everything under here. So the idea is to do the exact same thing here. I know that a lot of you are like, oh my gosh, how could you do? And it's like, it's literally the only way to get inside here. There is a plate that I can't get my hand into. You, I mean, I, I've tried using an oscillating saw to, to like try to cut things away, like carefully, pers there's no other way. Um, it's not a huge deal. You're not talking about recreating the wheel. The, there's already formers in here. And once we lift this balsa away, we'll be able to create templates for new formers to fit around this so that it doesn't shift. It's, it's not gonna be bad. It's just scary because you're cutting into an already proven model, okay? So I know I've been talking a lot. There's so much talking, but like you have, you have to understand what goes through your head for this kind of situation. And I hope you guys are patient enough with me to, to understand that. Um, so I'm going to shut up now. I'm going to put a camera on a tripod and put you on a time lapse so that you can see how I go about cutting this away and trying to create something new. Look at that. Oh, it's so cool. Okay, so hopefully now you can see the direction that we're going in. Um, and let me explain just a couple more things uh, just to walk you through my thought process. So we, we, we've got this, um, this there, there's, a, there's a stringer back behind this lip here. And uh, I cut a little bit above this pinking line so that I can remove wood and be able to fold this over. Okay, that was the thought process. So the, the line that I'm going to make is gonna be right along this pinking line because I wanna keep that subtle detail. So we'll remove enough wood to fold that over and then it will uh, the new hatch will butt up against that, okay? In addition to that, what we're gonna do is we're eventually gonna take out these stringers as well. These are non-structural. These are just basic soft balsa. Um, and honestly, all pretty easily twistable. There is a little bit of rigidity that's added in here, but look at this. These planks here, those are ply, okay? That is the main structure right here that's tying all of this together, okay? We've got ply here. This is balsa ply balsa okay ply and balsa this is not structural okay we're gonna be fine <laughs> it's gonna be okay so <laughs> uh really all that i have to do now is uh finish taking out these stringers and uh do finish work we're gonna do finish work to close up the areas we have to go in with, I'll go in with my oscillating saw once these stringers are removed. And you can see all of this gooped on epoxy that is just everywhere. And we're gonna make that as pretty as we possibly can. And you can see where I've, I tried to drill into this and it just, it didn't work. It, it just didn't work and it never was gonna work. So we'll remove that and we'll make this so that the new struts, when they go in, they will screw in this way into this plywood and that way they are serviceable and if they get bent or tweaked or whatever, we can easily recreate them because they're just straight. They just stick straight out at a diagonal, okay? It's not gonna be difficult. It's not gonna be expensive either. This is what, uh, 1 8 inch balsa? It's not the end of the world. We're talking a small patch job. We're making a hatch. It's a hatch job. Um, yeah, so thanks for following along today. I'm glad that you're able to be here on the floor in my shop with me to work on this. I'm excited to get this model flying again. I really, really am. 
The legacy of the Hell Diver that started with the Falcon is like one of my favorite stories in American aviation history. I love dive bombers, and this is where it all started for my country. And so I'm super stoked to share this with you. So if you guys do need some shop supplies, make sure you stop by Dubro.com. Uh, use my code Josh10 at checkout. I get nothing from it. It's for you. Go use it, use it well, use it wisely, and get those things that you need from Dubro. So in the meantime, I'm going to use the Zap Glue that I got from Dubro and make a new hatch and hopefully have an update for you very soon. Thanks.